Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another video for Eve Echoes. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Command Burst modules as they appear on the current test server for the May Balance Patch update. Now, of course, this is a test server, so everything that we're going to be looking at today is subject to change. If the numbers look a little bit different today and when they go live, don't shout at me. That's just how this works. I'm trying to help prepare you ahead of time for when these are added to the game because they're really cool, very exciting modules that do some really exciting, powerful stuff. So we're going to have a full in-depth look at those, what they do, how they work, and how you can influence them with skill training. So if you do enjoy this video, let me know by hitting a like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding that notification bell to never miss an upload, and of course, let me know in the comment section down below what ships and topics you'd like to see covered in future videos. Finally, if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, you can do so either by pledging to support on Patreon, or by finding our Redbubble merchandise store, both are linked in the description below. Anyway, all that said and done then, let's talk about Command Burst modules. First of all, then, I think it is absolutely vital that we examine what Command Burst modules actually are. Well, in short, they are medium-sized, mid-slot modules that apply a burst, a boost of statistics to every friendly ship within range in your current squad. Now, you need to have a special roll bonus on your ship to be able to fit Command Burst modules. Your ship will have, under its roll bonuses, can fit Command Burst modules. Currently, that is every battle cruiser in EVE Echoes, plus any ship with Command in its name, like the Talwar Command, the Korax Command, that kind of thing. They can fit Command Burst modules. There are three versions of these currently available. The Shield Command Burst, the Armoured Command Burst, and the Skirmish Command Burst. We're expecting to see mining command bursts added at some point in the future as well, which would then be fit onto things like the Porpoise or the Orca, but those are not currently available in the game. I have talked about those at length in other videos, so if you're interested to know more about the Porpoise or the Orca, do check in the description down below. I will have a link to those videos and a card up above if I remember it. Now, of course, these do come in various different meta levels as well. They start at Mark 7, then there's a Mark 9, then there's a couple of green versions. It goes all the way up to meta level 8. Meta level 8 is the current maximum we have for any command burst module. They don't go higher than that. So in order to have a look at these then, I've grabbed one of each of the meta level 8 command burst modules currently available on the test server. Obviously, statistics and numbers here are subject to change before they hit live. So let's have a look at how these actually work. Well, first of all, you'll notice that these have a simultaneous activation and simultaneous module limit of one. You can only have one of these active and one of them fitted at any one time. It's also only one ship per fleet can be using them, so they do not stack. One ship per squadron, sorry. So they do not stack, and you'll probably want a command ship or something with a command burst module in each and every squadron. They have a fairly hefty power grid requirement. You can see here 127 megawatts is the core shield command burst. Now the power grid requirement does go up the higher the meta level. So if you find that the core shield command burst is too big for your ship, you might find that the Mark 7, for example, does fit because it does consume less power grid. We then have an activation time, so it activates and then it's a 60 second cooldown before it hits again, um, and an optimal range of 15 kilometers. That is a radius of a sphere around you, so any ship within 15 kilometers will get the full effect of the shield command burst, assuming obviously that it's in your squadron and within that 15 kilometers. If it's 16 kilometers away, it will not get any effect. It is just an optimal range here. Like missiles, there is no accuracy fall off. You are either in range or you are out of range. You are either affected by the command burst module or you are not affected. There is no sliding scale. It is as simple as that. Reload time doesn't actually mean anything, so we can skip past that one for the time being. And then we come to fuel consumption of 1,800 gigajoules. That's fairly hefty, so you're going to want a lot of heavy water or uh, plasmoids or whatever it is that you carry for fuel in your ship's cargo hold. Every 60 seconds, it's going to use 1,800 gigajoules of fuel. That's a fair chunk, so do be aware of that. Only available within fleet. One, you can only use this when you are fleeted up with someone, which kind of makes sense. Um, and then we have the actual stats. Now, again, the stats are the only thing that changes between a Mark 7 and a core shield. The different meta levels, it's only the stats and the amount of power grid. They all have the same range, they all have the same activation time, they all have the same fuel consumption. That does not change within meta level only the amount of power grid required and the actual effects of the command burst. 
Now here we have a shield command burst, and this does four things to your ship and every friendly ship within range within your squadron. First of all, shield booster capacity need 5.72% down. That means if your uh, friends are running shield boosters, their shield boosters require less capacitor to operate. Same goes for remote shield booster capacity need. So if you've got a shield command burst module effective um, near, for example, some scythes or ospreys, their remote shield boosters will use less capacitor. It also gives a bonus of 7.81% to everyone's shields. That means if they had, for example, 100 shields, which is pathetically small, but go with me. If they had 100 shields, they now have 107.8 shields. It is literal additional shield hit points, like a shield extender, but it hits everyone in, in within range and within the squadron, of course. Finally then, a shield resistance boost of 7.63%. So again, that's like having an adaptive invulnerability field running, um, and you're upping the resistances of yourself and everyone nearby. Now, if those percentages seem a little bit small to you, don't stress yourself. There are some skills now that are going to increase these later. But again, remember, that is all 10 of you in the squadron being affected by this. So, that's all 10 of you getting better capacitor usage on your shield boosters and on your remote shield boosters. You're getting bigger shields and they are higher resistance just because someone nearby in your squadron happens to have a shield command burst active. What about the armored command burst? Well, it's pretty much the same for the most part. The starting stats are literally identical. The amount of power grid, fuel consumption, yada, yada, yada. It then comes down here to the uh, capacitor need um, reduction, which is 5.72, like on shields, same with the remote armor repairer. So um, armor repairers and remote armor repairers require less capacitor per activation. They increase your armor by 7.81, and notably the armor resistances are increased by 9.54. In this case, the armored command burst currently applies more armor resistance than the shield one does, which in my opinion is exactly kind of how it should be. This is a great little command burst and it's going to really help out any ships in your uh, squadron that are armor tanking. Basically, repairers, repairers run on less capacitor, you get bigger armor tank overall and you get better resistances. Finally, then, we have the odd one out, the Skirmish Command Burst. Again, same power grid, same activation time, same optimal range, same fuel consumption, yada, yada, yada. But we get a massive lift list of effects on this one, and this is personally my favourite and the one that I'm most excited about. First up, an Afterburner Velocity Bonus and a Warp Drive Boost Bonus of 8.8%. That means if your warp drive was going to give you 150% speed boost, or your afterburner was going to give you 150% speed boost, that 150% is going to be increased by 8.8%. I can't do the math off the top of my head quickly. That's not 158.8, it's an 8.8% increase to the 150, so 150 plus 8.8% 8 .8 of 150. Same with the warp drive. The warp disruptor and warp scramblers in that range get an increased optimal range of 6.1%, as do the stasis webifiers. So your webs, your scrams, and your disruptors are all at longer range if they're hit by a skirmish command burst. And your signature range, uh, signature radius, and inertia modifier are both reduced as well by 4.8 and 7.8% respectively. So you're getting a smaller ship that moves faster thanks to the afterburner and warp drive boost bonus, it gets better tackling effects, and it is more agile thanks to a reduced inertia modifier. That is pretty sweet. If you are running a wolf pack, for example, with a load of destroyers, and you've got a destroyer command with you, that skirmish command burst is going to help you speed tank so much better. If you've got a friendly interceptor, for example, nearby, or other tackle frigates and things like that, you're, they're going to have better disruptors, scramblers, and webifiers in range regards, etc. This is a really cool command burst, and I'm really excited to get to test this one out. Obviously, we don't have the command destroyers currently available on the test server. Someone at NetEase has clearly goofed up, and we still have not got access to them, which... Kind of sucks, but hey, there we go. We will have a look at their stats as they currently stand. I just can't actually undock one and show you yet. But okay, that's all cool and well. That's what the command bursts are and what they do. But what about the skills? Well, you'll find the command burst skills on the basic ship tree under the electronics branch at the bottom here with fleet support. And of course, there are three skill tiers, basic, advanced, and expert for shield command, skirmish command, and armored command. 
So let's have a look at what they do, because they've actually translated these to English at last. So, starting with the Shield Command Burst skill. What this does is it reduces the amount of fuel required to activate a Shield Command Burst module, it increases the Shield Command Burst module's effective range, and then improves all of its boosts by 10 to 20%. 10% increase to the capacitor adjustment for shield boosters and remote shield boosters, 10% increase to shield resistances, and 20% increase to the shield bonus effect. Again, that is to the effect, not cumulative. It's not like this suddenly takes the shield bonus from 7% up to 27%. It's an additional 20% of 7% on top. So you're looking at what? I think that takes you to about 9, 10% effect uh, boost there, which is a pretty big upgrade if we're being completely honest. Um, and certainly, these do then stack into Advanced Shield Command, which is an even more powerful version. This is one of the few skills that works the other way around. Normally, a basic skill is the majority of that skill's effect. Then, once you get to Advanced, it's not quite as much. Like, if you look at, say, uh, Laser Operation and compare it to Advanced Laser Operation, you'll see that Laser Operation gives you a bigger damage boost, yada yada yada, whereas Advanced, it's not quite as much effect. Here, it's actually more effect. It's a 20% activation fuel cost, 30% effective range is lower, but then it's 20% across the board except for the shield resistance, which is still 10%. Then as we look at Expert, again, Expert is very similar to Advanced. 20% reduction to activation fuel cost, the effective range boost is plus 20%, down from 50 to 30 to 20, um, but we're still getting 20% booster capacity adjustment effect for remote shield recharger and shield boosters, plus the shield bonus effect and shield resistance bonus are 10% there. Now, I'm not going to lie, these are fairly intensive skills. The amount of skill points required to this is not far off medium weapon operation, so like medium cannon operation, medium missile operation, fairly similar to that to train it up to there. Not a cheap skill by any stretch, but again, these are designed to be used on medium ships, so it kind of makes sense that they'd have a similar sort of cost in regards to skill points. It does mean, though, as a destroyer pilot training into these, suddenly you're training into you know a skill that takes a lot longer than perhaps some of your other skills might. But anyway, looking at the Armoured Command skill then, very similar here to the shields. Obviously, we get the reduction to fuel cost activation, the increase to effective range, and the 10% and 20% increases there to the effects of the Armour Repair Capacitor Adjustment, Remote Armour Repair Capacitor Adjustment, Armour Bonus, Armour Resistance Effect. And again, it's a bigger boost here in Advanced, not quite the same boost once you hit Expert, and the only thing that drops between these is the effective range. It's 50% on Basic, 30 on Advanced, and 20 on Expert. Still a very nice stacking effect here, um, definitely worth training into if you're going to be using these because that does give huge, huge boosts. Finally then, the Skirmish Command skill, very, very similar, still 10% activation fuel cost, 50% effective range, then 10% across the board on all of the other bonuses. So increasing that Afterburner and Micro, micro Warp Drive boost bonus by an additional 10%, again, that's 10% of the original bonus. So if it was a 10% bonus before and you're getting 10%, that's now an 11% bonus, not a 20% bonus. It is multiplicative, not additive. And that's a bleh, hard word to say, multiplicative. I think that's a word. My maths training has fallen out the window. And again, advanced command skirmish, advanced skirmish command, same kind of thing. 20% activation fuel, lower effective range, but bigger boost on all of the others, with expert skirmish command being your final tier there. Now, these are very expensive skills. That's nearly 5 million skill points to get expert uh, command all the way up to maximum. So these are going to take a while to train, so you're going to need to decide if actually going into this is something that you want to do. For me personally, because destroyers have been tanked in so many other ways this patch, I will be definitely going into command burst skills because I want to give those destroyers a whirl and have a reason to use them. But talking about those destroyers, let's actually have a look at their stats because the skills aren't the only way to squeeze more out of your command burst modules. 
Before we talk about specific command hulls, I just want to talk about battle cruisers as a whole. Because if you pick any battle cruiser currently in Eve Echoes and look under its roll bonuses, here even the Harbinger prototype, you'll see can fit command bursts. And this is true across the board if we jump into the Kaldari state and pick everyone's favourite, the Drake, you'll see this has can fit command bursts. It's just kind of how it works with battle cruisers. Not the same with any other ship type though. If you look at like the Blackbird here, there's no bonus there, can fit warp disruption field generators, cool, but not command bursts. Anyway, let's start off then by having a look at what I would refer to as the armor command burst ships, the Algos Sea and the Dragoon Sea. Again, these <laughs> these are the Algos Command and Dragoon Command. We don't have access to them actually in, in game yet on the test server for me to fly, but we can see the stats and the stats have changed compared to how they were when I first took a look at them on the test server. So the first thing to notice about these destroyer commands, these command destroyers, is they have a roll bonus that they can fit command bursts, and they get a 95% reduction to the amount of power grid required in order to do so, which makes sense because you're looking at a module that requires like 170 megawatts of power grid, and these ships, if we have a look at their power grid down here, you'll see 73 megawatts and 70 megawatts. That's clearly not enough to fit a command burst module on its own. But then in regards to their skills, first of all, the Algos Sea. This is a skirmish command burst um, ship, so that's the skill you're going to be training in here, and it gives you an additional 2% burst strength and 3% burst strength. Um, this I think is where we're kind of coming undone on the test server at the moment. That should be 2% com uh, skirmish command burst strength and 3% armoured command burst strength. Then on the Dragoon, it's a 3% armoured command burst strength and 2% skirmish, or the other way around. It's, uh, the 3% is the one that's the, relevant to the skill, 2% is the other one. So on the Algos, the 3% is for skirmish, the 2% is for armoured, the uh, Dragoon, the 3% is for armoured, and the 2% is for skirmish. Then of course you get your typical kind of boosts for a command, for a destroyer of this type, an Algos or a Dragoon, um, the additional drone DPS, um, drone EHP or drone velocity depending on which one you go for, the Algos or the Dragoon, and then 4% increased armor resistance. And that com comes from of course advanced destroyer command. So if you've got that fully trained, you're looking at 125% additional drone DPS, 20% additional armor resistance on either of those ships, then the Algos C will give you 50% increase to your drone's effective hit points whereas the Dragoon Sea will give you 50% increase to your drone's velocity. These are both very powerful ships, and the main difference is going to come down to which type of armor command burst you want to be training into, and which way you're going to be doing things. Of course, they're not the only two that we can look at. So if I'm now here in the Kaldari state, we're going to pull up the Korak Sea, and then we're going to jump across to the Minmatar Republic, up to tech level 8, and grab the Talwar Sea as well, so we can see these two side by side. Same thing here to note, interestingly enough, five high slots. This is actually something I'm very excited about, and I really hope they keep this once these go on to live. I'm not convinced they will, however, um, considering the only other destroyer with five high slots are the uh, Tech 10 um, Assault 2 destroyers, um, like the Korax 2 Assault and the Talwar 2 Assault, etc. Um, but it's still pretty exciting to see that it could be done. The difference, obviously, as well there is that the Assault 2 destroyers um, have a fourth low slot, and they have three of each of the rigs. So who knows, maybe they will actually keep the five high slots. We can but hope. Again, like the Dragoon and the Algos, 95% reduction to Command Burst Power Grid needs, and the capability of fitting one of these. Then as we look at the skills here, it's Information Command Burst and Shield Command Burst. Now, Information Command Bursts don't exist in the game anymore, so I really think that this is now going to be um, the Skirmish Command Burst bonus on the Korax, giving it 3% increase to Skirmish Command Bursts, and 2% increase to Shield Command Bursts. Then the Talwar gets a 3% to Shield Command Bursts, and 2% to skirmish command bursts. That, to me, makes most sense. Although, admittedly, I don't know, I think those should still be swapped around. I think that the Korax C should be getting better shield burst, whereas the Talwar C, being a Minmatar ship that's all about speed, should be getting more on the skirmish, but I kind of get where that's coming from. Now, interestingly, if you haven't watched my other videos on it, the whole... Um, like information command bo uh, bonus there. It, it's not something that's come out of the blue. There are a, There is a fourth type of command burst in EVE Online, information command bursts, and it affects neutralizers, energy Nosferatus, that kind of thing there. It's kind of an E-War version of it, and it makes sense for Kaldari to have that because they're big on their scanning um, and their information warfare. Not 
so much in Echoes, however, where the Kaldari's biggest thing is that they've got bigger shields than everyone else, so kind of I think they should get the shield command boost bonus. Um, whereas the Talwa being Minmatar, whose thing's all about speed, should get the skirmish one. But hey, that's neither here nor there, and it's up to the developers. Finally, then, as we move into Advanced Destroyer Command, you'll see that both of these get a 5% increase per level to small missile torpedo damage, 25% increase at full training, 4% shield resistance, 20% at full training, and then either a 10% increase to the small missile torpedo explosion velocity, which helps these hit faster moving ships, or a 10% reduction to micro warp drive signature radius penalty, so 50% uh, less bloom when using micro warp drive, which really isn't that much, that needs to be 75% before it even really does anything. Stat wise though, these things are fast, they're also surprisingly small for a destroyer, um, they're, they're just very fast destroyers, and I do expect some of these stats here will change, but I just wanted to showcase that kind of effect there of what these destroyers do. So let's move across now to the just a couple of the command battle cruisers to showcase how they work. For this then we're going to have a look at two of the new Tech 10 two command battle cruisers, the tier two command battle cruisers. So the Cyclone for the Minmatar and the Prophecy for Amar. So the Prophecy 2 command, Cyclone 2 command. Now, obviously, as battle cruisers, these can fit command bursts, and then they've got their usual bonus. The Cyclone gets that 25% additional medium missile torpedo velocity, and the Prophecy gets 25 kilometers additional drone control range. As we come down, then, you'll see that here we get bonuses from Advanced Shield Command and Advanced Armor Command. This is a 4% burst strength and 6% burst strength, plus 10% burst effective range. And again, they've swapped these round. So what I'm guessing here is that the Prophecy 2 command is a 6% increase to the burst strength of the Armoured command bonus, and the 6% on the Cyclone 2 command is the Shield command burst bonus. Then the 4% of each of those will be to Skirmish commands because that gives you the, uh, the, the the main one as based on the skill and a secondary one that's lower. Now you see that at full training on here, at full 5 levels, that's a 30% increase in its main command burst and a 20% increase in its secondary command burst. That is a big boost on top of the skills, bonuses that you're already getting for having trained into those. Plus then the ships themselves get things like additional shield booster amount, medium missile torpedo activation time, and medium missile torpedo explosion velocity for the cyclone, with the prophecy getting armor resistance, drone DPS, and drone velocity. So. They are pretty decent combat vessels to begin with, plus you're then getting the bonuses there to your different command bursts. Again, we'll find out when these go to live. If I'm right on whether or not those 6 and 4% are the way around I said they are, we will have to see. Things on the test server are still a little bit doohickey around at the point of recording, but, you know, that it's a test server. This is why we're here, to point these kind of things out. I've already sent both of those bits of feedback to the developers um, via in-game tickets just to say, look, this is a problem. I've also done it on the content creator channel in the Eve Echoes community Discord. I do recommend, obviously, as well, if you've got screenshots and things like that, take some of these, showcase the problems and issues to uh, the suggestions channel of the Eve Echoes community discord the more feedback we can give on this test server the better things will be because ultimately that's this is our chance to have our voice heard and i know there again i'm right up there with you i know there are people who are a little bit put off by some of these notes um, and the implementation of some of these mechanics but only by having our voices heard in a calm constructive and productive manner can we work together to move forward to a better Eve Echoes. Yes, I'm still sour and bitter about interdictors and how destroyers have been treated, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, interdictors and destroyers in general have been treated, and how interceptors have been buffed needlessly, but I'm hoping that we can work together to make a positive change in this game. It's how we do it going forward together. Anyway, folks, that does sum up everything here I wanted to talk about in regards to Command Bursts as they currently stand on the Eve Echoes test server for the May update. Everything you've seen in today's video is, of course, subject to change. There is every possibility that the numbers you've seen, things like power grid requirements, fuel necessity, and the amount of boost that they give, that kind of thing, is all going to be changed. And if there are any significant updates, I will, of course, put out another video shouting about those in the future. Anyway, folks, thank you ever so much for watching this one right the way to the end. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on Command Burst modules and these particular ships. Would love to hear your opinions in the comment section down below. Otherwise, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.